Coming up, prosecutors now guided by clear and defined regulations and farmers protecting their produce from thieves. We also have the latest on Zigbee control measures. This informative edition of Jamaica Magazine is a must watch. I am Adrian Atkinson and I'll be back with the details right after the news. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, Chikungunya, and Dengue viruses. Search for its breeding sites and destroy them. A message from the Ministry of Health. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, February 4. The Health Ministry is reminding private doctors that they have a legal obligation to report suspected cases of the Zika virus. Under the Public Health Act and regulations, Zika is a Class 1 notifiable disease, which means it must be reported to the Ministry within 24 hours of suspicion. In light of this, the Health Minister has called on a local physician, Dr. Sandra Williams, to provide the Ministry with information she claims she has regarding Zika virus cases by this Friday. Minister Dallas says the information must be provided in the format prescribed by the Public Health Act and should include the names of those patients the doctor believes showed symptoms similar to those of the Zika virus. Energy and Mining Minister Philip Powell has indicated that there is a strong possibility that Jamaica will stop the export of bauxite. Minister Powell was addressing stakeholders, delegates and trade unions representing workers of Naranda Bauxite Company. He emphasized that the long-term benefits for the country were many if our bauxite was processed here and said government had already put measures in place for non-export of ore. But we do have arrangements in place that will be honored. But the long-term aim of this government, and I am hoping for every other government that comes for the next 50 years, will be that we will deny the export of bauxite. Our objective as a government going forward is for Jamaica to become a base location. That is, we will be the first call on the priority shelf of those who are involved in this metal. So that when there is a dip, we'll be the last one to fall. Over 3.5 million kilograms of produce have been harvested to date from the nine agro-parks currently being operated across the country. Agriculture Minister Derek Kellyer says the parks have also provided employment for over 1,400 farmers and other workers. He says plans are progressing for the establishment of another nine parks with some 20,000 hectares of land identified. The agro-park model of agricultural production is here to stay because it has proven to be among the best practices. Minister Kelly was addressing the launch of Agchem Plant Limited recently. Government is taking a comprehensive approach to the rehabilitation and maintenance of farm roads in a bid to accelerate growth in the sector. For the first time in a joined up government approach, our Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries has been given budgetary allocations by the Ministry of Finance and Planning specifically for farm roads. The Agriculture Minister was addressing Tuesday's contract signing for the repair of 22 farm roads in 10 parishes. It's part of the $1.2 billion National Farm Roads Rehabilitation Program. The Science and Technology Ministry will be undertaking a comprehensive review of all 242 community access points cap sites across the island. Portfolio Minister Philip Powell says those facilities that have not been performing up to scratch will be replaced by new centers that need the support. We are not going to put money into a facility if we do not have the confidence that the people who are managing it will be accountable and will use the money for the purpose for which it is, use the equipment for the purpose for which it's been dedicated, and more importantly, to have programs to enable the proper use of those resources. Minister Powell made the announcement at the official opening of the Flanker Resource Center in St. James recently. The facility was equipped with 18 computers and other equipment at a cost of $3.7 million. It will provide internet access to residents at minimal or no cost. 
And finally, a 6.8 million US dollar project has been launched to modernize and upgrade current deficiencies in Jamaica's climate monitoring networks. It's being funded by the World Bank. I trust that uh, the implementation of this project will help um, strengthen Jamaica's resilience to climate change impacts and then also help um, protect livelihoods in Jamaica. It will place the country in a position to improve the quality and use of climate related data and information for effective planning and action at local and national levels. The first component of the project will involve upgrading the hydrometeorological data collection, processing and forecasting systems. Component 2 will provide technical assistance support to government to promote Jamaica's readiness for climate events. And the third component will provide technical assistance to citizens on climate change matters. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amanda Chisholm, thank you for watching. Guns are a significant problem in Jamaica, and that is why we have to move to do something about it. It is in this context that I am now launching a special initiative of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Get the Guns campaign. You, the public, can keep illegal guns out of your communities by using all means to inform the police as to how illegal guns are stored and moved within the communities. Download and use the Stay Alert app from the Google Play Store. Call 119-311-811 or the nearest police station. Government has launched a multi-sectoral response to the threat of Zika virus. As we heard at a press briefing this week, parish councils, schools, officials and young people are part of the intervention. Let's explore some of the measures to contain the spread of Zika in Jamaica. The ministry has activated its National Emergency Operations Center, which is coordinating the response. The island-wide island -wide enhanced surveillance system is in place to monitor all fever and rash cases, neurological syndromes and congenital malformations, and any other presentations consistent with Zika. The Ministry of Health and the Regional Health Authorities, through collaboration with other ministries, Ministry of Local Government, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Youth and Culture, Ministry of Transport, Work and Housing, on the instruction of the Prime Minister, will put in further measures to ensure that the vector is treated and killed. Our youth are on board. And through our agency, the National Youth Service, we have ensured that we'll be able to give 200 volunteers to the Ministry of Health from three areas of the programs that we have under the NYS. One, our special employment program, which will see about six young people per, per parish. And these parishes are the high-risk parishes that the minister has outlined. But for KSA, you'll see 32 of them. And they will be deployed for a period of four weeks. They'll be trained by the Ministry of Health in terms of what is necessary. They'll be deployed. They'll give out the pamphlets and information. The other aspect is our social media campaign where volunteers also from our registry of the NYS will be working in tandem with the Ministry of Health to make sure that we cover all the social media platforms. And then the fourth, the third um, area that we'll be taking them from is the NYS Volunteer Initiative. In conjunction, those volunteers will go out with members of parliament in the various constituencies to assist them with their cleanup campaign. Right now in central Kingston, which is a very densely populated area, there are 400 young people under the training of the Heart Trust NTA, the Ministry of Health, the KSAC, with the assistance of the Citizen Security and Justice Program, the police and the army, who are being trained as sanitation technicians 
and they will be going around the parade gardens area in the next three days, um, drawing out all of the uh, rubbish um, mosquito breeding sites, old tire, old car, old pan, everything, um, to make sure that this has a community aspect to it. The Ministry of Education has designated this coming Friday, February 5th, 2016, again, under the leadership of the Ministry of Health, as National Cleanup Day in schools to facilitate vector control activities to rescue, reduce mosquito breeding in schools. And we are mandating once a week, look for and remove current and possible breeding sites. We're hoping to provide, or will provide, every school with repellent. We have a very active program in um, Spanish Town, in Manchester, which we understand is also one of those areas which has uh, a lot of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The program includes town hall meetings, flyers, town criers, ads, radio and cable. We have trained 863 persons to join River this already this year to uh, disseminate information and to try to identify and destroy breeding sites. I have also instructed NSWMA to send out an advisory to all persons, all companies and individuals in terms of the deal with um, tires. They should put a hole in the tire before we take them onto where we dispose of tires these days. Those who are unable to do so, we're asking them to fill it with sand or earth so that you will not have any um, place for the breeding of the mosquitoes. The Ministry of Transport, Work and Housing is embarking this week on a $200 million cleanup, which is gullies and drains, etc., etc., through the Jeep Secretariat and through the, the ministry itself. Within Portmore, we have deployed additional resources, including vector control workers, equipment and supplies, as well as other resources to enhance surveillance and public awareness. The government is taking a coordinated approach in managing this public health emergency. We have to view this as a concern for every single citizen and do our part to reduce the spread of this disease. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Nobody want to plant the corn. Everybody want to rear the barn. Who you are going to blame it on when it's the next man you are deep in pan. Well, you're wrong. Farmers, let us be serious about predial larceny. It is affecting all of us. If you are aware of incidents of predial larceny, make contact with your local police station or call Crime Stop at 311. Predial larceny is everybody's business. Members of the Predial Larceny Prevention Unit have been engaging farmers, encouraging them to work together and cooperate with the police to build a strong network in the fight against predial theft. On the ground, in the field, meeting with farmers and stakeholders, government's Predial Larceny Prevention Unit has been working aggressively to put a dent in the theft of farm animals and produce. This intense campaign by the Ministry of Agriculture, aided by the police, has led to a 14% reduction of farm thefts from the establishment of the unit in March 2015 to October of the same year. During that period, the division had 133 prosecutions, resulting in 125 convictions. Officers also seized and disposed of over 4,200 pounds of uncertified meat 
and recovered more than 190 stolen animals. We're going around this island and letting people know that work is being done and we're working for the farmers to ensure that you feel safe, you are protected and that you are reassured. I think DSP Francis and his crew have done a fairly good job. With that commendation, the work continues. On one of the farm visits, DSP Francis indicated that among the strategies being looked at was the publishing of repeat offenders' names. The meeting was also used to inform farmers about some of the things they could do to mitigate thefts. We have the very common, the dog. Get a dog put on the farm. You also can put up camera systems to ensure that you have a good view of what is happening around your area and around the farm. If you have farm animals, we have seen persons use the bell system. You put a bell around the neck of the animal, so if they are moved or if there is any slight movement, it triggers a sound system that will alert you as the farmer. We have seen the more sophisticated method of the tagging of the animals, the tattooing of animals. These are all methods that are used. Farmers are also coming up with their own solutions, such as implementing the farm watch system. Presence of persons doing surveillance on the farm, I think that um, helps to cut back on the predator loss. Because um, persons wouldn't take the chance coming in knowing that there are persons watching the farm. And as farmers, you, you, you can look out for each, each other as well. That's the best way to go about protecting yourselves against each other and against predial thieves. So if we come together and try to stamp out predial last night, I think it is for the betterment of all of us in the industry. The police officers used the opportunity to appeal to farmers who use different sets of workers for reaping and related activities to create a database to safeguard their businesses. You also need to ensure that you get the relevant names next of kin. You also need to ensure you have background checks where necessary on the employees that are employed to your operations. By doing so, you will create a system where persons may feel a sense of being caught if they take the chance to steal your produce. And to protect consumers, he urged for warning signs to be up when produce has been sprayed. Members of the Predial Larceny Prevention Unit visited over 100 farms and held more than 70 community meetings in 2015. These are aimed at getting farmers to work more closely with each other and the police to build a stronger resistance against thieves. It is at these meetings that the concerns of farmers are addressed. How can you protect us going the right way, producing our produce, that the end customer knows that it's coming not from a stolen area or that it's not affect, affected by chemicals or anything. We're speaking about traceability. How can you know where your produce is coming from? The system that the government have in place currently have to do with the receipt system. The Jamaica Agricultural Society have a receipt system that accounts for the produce that you buy and the person who has it in their possession where they get it from. We're trying to establish this kind of system across the country. The farmers were also assured that while two persons were charged with coordinating the unit's activities from a national level, resources were drawn from all police divisions. In each parish, the operation officer is responsible for pre larceny and responsible for treating with those reports. We want to reassure you that the Jamaica Constabulary Force pre larceny prevention unit is here to provide you with the relevant support to take action where necessary for you to carry on with your business of farming and feeding the nation. We want you to continue to reap what you grow. It is this level of commitment by the government plus the support of farmers which will allow us to see more reductions in predial larceny, achieving a targeted priority of safety and security for both farmers and consumers. The Office of the Children's Advocate is very aware that we have some parents who get particularly anxious at the start of a new school year 
And so we really just wanted to share with you a few tips that you can utilize to help keep your children, especially the very young ones who are going out for the first time, nice and safe from sexual abuse. Parents need to recognize that the private parts, as we call them, or the genitalia, are regular parts of the body. And so in teaching your children about the forehead and the nose and the hand, you can also teach them the names of these body parts because that does two things. It puts them in a position to speak about these parts when something is going wrong. And it also tells them that even though they are private parts, it's not too private to talk about, particularly with a parent. Children need to know that there should be no secrets between them and their parents or guardians. Oftentimes, when persons want to abuse children, they tend to encourage them to keep a little secret. You know, this is between me and you. But from very early, parents need to establish with their children that the lines of communication are open. Mommy and daddy, or auntie and uncle, or whoever is the responsible adult in that child's life, can actually have a discussion, age appropriate of course, about anything at all that may be troubling the child. The third tip is that parents need to cultivate throughout the child's lifespan that environment whereby the child feels comfortable to speak. Conversation should not be off limit, topics should not be taboo, and you really need to get to a stage whereby you have teachable moments, we call them. So we see a lot of things reported in the newspapers, sometimes on the nightly news. And we can use some of these instances of horrible things that are happening to other children to start little discussions with our own children to give them tips as to how they can avoid or prevent, um, perhaps completely, any such reality happening to them. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134, or website www.oca.gov.jm. Well, I did, I make the difference, and I did, I take a stand. Let me dare you to think of someone else who's in need of a helping hand. Up next, Jamaica's first prosecutor's manual was launched recently by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. We delve into the manual and tell you how it fits in with initiatives to reform the justice system. Government's plan of action for a reformed justice system has seen the implementation of several measures. These include the refurbishing of courthouses and instituting policies to strengthen and regulate the management of administrative duties. The latest development is the creation of a prosecutor's manual for Jamaica, the result of collaboration with local and international partners. The 263-page document is the first of its kind for the country and was launched in January 2016 by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. The manual outlines clear guidelines for prosecutors to execute their duties. This manual is a culmination of consultation and codification of rules and protocols to be employed by prosecutors in Jamaica. It is therefore one very important means by which Crown Counsel at the DPP's office, clerks of court in the resident magistrates' courts, or any other external attorneys at law in different entities or by themselves who operate with the express fiat of the DPP seek to conduct business. There are 15 chapters to the Prosecutor's Manual for Jamaica. Chapters 1 to 3 deal with the Code of Conduct for Prosecutors, guidelines about the decision to prosecute cases and adherence to the prescribed principles of disclosure. Chapter 4 deals with guidance in relation to bail and related issues. Chapter 5 deals with plea discussions. Chapter 6 contains guidance and directions in relation to certain critical subjects including the treatment 
of children, unrepresented accused persons, firearm offenses, capital murder, and the proceeds of crime. Chapter 7 deals with mutual legal assistance and extradition matters. Chapters 8 to 12 of the manual provide detailed guidelines for relations between prosecutors and judges, jurors, other government officials, witnesses, and victims. Meanwhile, Chapter 13 provides guidance to prosecutors in their relations with other lawyers. Chapter 14 provides an outline of statutorily and non-statutorily prescribed relations between prosecutors and the police or other investigators. Chapter 15 deals with relations between prosecutors and the media. This manual benefited from collaboration with many stakeholders whose input was sought to make it a living document and a real and practical document. Funding and technical support was provided by the Canadian government's Justice Undertaking for Social Transformation Just program and the British government. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, assisted with the publication of the manual. This bold step will help improve public confidence in the administration of justice. Progress is being made in the prosecuting services and our thinking and our professionalism in the 21st century. This is an important achievement as this groundbreaking manual documents an operational model, provides clear guidelines to ensure the consistent application of agreed standards and procedures. It represents a significant um, achievement for Jamaica to have a document like that um, developed and published so that those who have published it um, um, can be held to account um, by the standards that they have set for themselves and their willingness to, be, um, to accept being assessed by reference to those standards is, I think, an important step forward for governance in the country. The Ministry of Justice, strengthening the delivery of justice to Jamaicans. All the people there with our Zig V, all of y'all. Zig V in the Caribbean territory, but we now want that virus to set pan we. So make sure it's send us stagnant water in sight and mash up all mosquito breed in sight. Poor hole in the tin, them where you dash by and change the water in your vase every day. No later, dispose of your garbage proper. You know them, the tin, the we turn green blacker. Tour your community and tour your yard to suppress mosquito. We have to go hard. Dash with old tire turn over drum pan for prevention is the greatest weapon and special shout out to pregnant ladies, protect yourselves and protect your babies. Draw for your zapper and your mosquitoes, pray we fiddle all that we can to keep them away. How we now was in me? Our 30 minutes are up. But join us again tomorrow for another informative program. In the meantime, to enjoy this show again or view another, connect to our website, gis.gov.jm. We value your feedback, so send them to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm or a tweet at GIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Walk good. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.